Fellow YouTubers, thanks for tuning in to the Paymo channel again. Today we're going to put an electric fan in the BMW. Uh, you might have seen in one of the previous videos I was talking about doing that. I'm going to actually do it today. Before we start, I'm going to show you a few things that I've done in preparation and then hopefully you'll be able to see the whole process of putting the fan in and getting it all wired in as neat as possible. Down here you can see I've got my fan removal tool and my pulley holder tool which I've chipped out on and scrimped on and this has done the job for me a couple of times before so it should be fine this time. I've got a whole bunch of electrical connections which I've used. In my box I've got my SPAL fan, I've got my electrical setup in here which I'll describe in just a minute and I've got a variable thermostatic switch here which is what I'm going to use to control the fan with. Up till this point all I've really done so far is try and work out where all the wiring wants to go, put the electrical connectors on it and set up the relay. Just before we start the BMW, in the background you can see the FTO track car. I haven't forgotten the FTO world, don't worry, I know I've done a lot of E36 videos recently, but the next track car video will be it coming out of the garage on its wheels. Okay, so in preparation, we've got a wiring diagram that comes with a thermostatic switch. I've followed that to the best of my ability, and what I've ended up with is this little mass of wires and a relay. To explain briefly what I've got going on here, I've got here a standard relay that comes with a thermostatic switch. This relay has got four poles. Um, the pole you see unconnected here is going to go to a signal pole which is connected to the ignition of the car so that the fan turns off when the ignition's turned off. Okay, so what we've done is we've gone into this fuse here which is number 44. This has got a 12 volt feed that feeds the radio when the ignition is on. So I've used that one and I've gone underneath the fuse box and I've teed onto that wire and given me an extra contact wire here. So this is going to connect to the open pole on the relay. There's a picture of that hopefully coming up now. And then on the rest of this relay, what we've got here is we've got a 12 volt feed fused with a 20 amp fuse which is going to go to the battery connection just out of shot here where the tip of my finger is. We've got an earth wire here which I'm going to connect to this earthing point here and then I've got a signal wire here which is going to go all the way around the front here to where I'm going to mount the thermostatic switch this hopefully is going to then set into the fuse box with all this wiring coming out through the trunking hole so it's nice and waterproof and it's kept really neat and tidy and then once we've run that all to the power into the earth and to the 12 volt ignition we're then going to take the thermostatic switch which is just over here and we're going to connect this up so this I've actually pre-drilled three holes in the, the slam panel of the BMW here now I'm really fussy guys I don't want to end up with it rusting out the holes so I've actually painted this and I've put in three plastic inserts so that when I screw this thermostatic switch down and into that one it won't give me any vibration and two it shouldn't rust in the future one thing I will note is that I, because I'm a plater, I've actually plated parts of this so it's nice and clean. And a little adjustment I had to make, I don't know if you'll be able to make this on camera. So the bracket here actually screws onto the thermostatic switch with two little screws that poke through the bracket into the actual switch itself. A point to note is these screws, when they come with the packet that I got, they were too long so they had to be cut down so they wouldn't go too far through and hit the switch body itself. Okay, so that's about it. The wiring's all there. The only other bit of wiring we needed to do was on the radiator fan, which is dead simple. All we've got is the radiator fan itself. I bought a spal fan, so it's got a plug connector on it. I've gone for two spade connectors, one for the earth that's going to come around and earth over here, and then one for the signal connection, which I'm not going to cut yet until I know exactly how long I need it to go, which is going to go on the thermostatic switch. So check back in a few seconds and we'll start removing the fan that's on there at the moment and we'll start putting this nice new spiral electric fan in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove this plastic shield. The engine is cold, so we've already let it cool down. Obviously we're going to be disconnecting the top radiator hose so we don't want the engine warm. My fan shroud has been cable tied on in the past because of a previous problem I had with it touching the original viscous fan. Pop the alternator duct out, here we go. Okay, so radiator fan removal. On E36 you need to really have a locking tool because obviously it turns with the water pump. I've done this a couple of times with my special 32mm spanner here. And all we're going to do is we're going to go straight down this gap here onto the 
the nut with the water pump and as you can see as I start to turn that it wants to turn the engine with it so we need to go in here with a special tool and lock off two of the nuts of the water pump we can just about reach them and then the radiator fan turns off clockwise it's a left-handed thread folks so so pretty much as soon as you crack the nut provided the the engine is cold the viscous coupling is going to stay nice and tight so at this point i can just spin the fan clockwise and it will eventually come off that water pump pulley now the reason i'm doing this job as you can see from looking at this fan as it turns around is i've got broken fan blades now i believe the reason for that is probably because of slightly worn engine mounts but the simple fact that it's it's doing this gives me massive worry that if the fan explodes it's going to take out all the radiator pipe work and everything else with it I've been very lucky to not lose anything that's what I've got left of the fan now this fan is only six months old believe it or not so it's a bit disappointing that I've already lost it and you can see I've been lucky and it's broken two blades off almost directly opposite each other when I first had this problem what was happening was the fan shroud was getting dragged towards the fan under normal operation you'll be able to see here where there's evidence of the fan blade touching the fan shroud so when I lost the fan originally before I did my radiator and the old fan that I've changed that you've just seen me remove the reason that it was bust was because this was getting dragged towards the fan touching the fan blades and causing me problems now the only reason I knew it was broken again if you look at the top of the fan shroud just here you can see where it's just hit the, the evacuating blade has come flying up and hit this part of the fan shroud and completely destroyed it so thanks but no thanks BMW I come from a Japanese car world where every car I've ever worked on has had a transverse mounted engine and an old fashioned electric fan so I feel safer and more comfortable with that I'm not doing this specifically because of gaining horsepower or engine revving freely although some people have said to me it will help I'm not interested in that I want a reliable fan setup that's going to work now there'll be many of you out there that argue the viscous fan is a great setup and hey man why don't you just change your engine mounts now I totally agree with you in some levels but if I can eliminate one thing and then still change the engine mounts later on then I believe I'm kind of winning on both grounds so that's why we're going to this trouble guys so right what we need to do now is get the new fan attached to the radiator right so we've got the spal fan in now the only thing i'm not necessarily really happy with is i'd like to have a bigger fan uh, this is an 11 inch spal fan and as you can see i've only got i've just got an inch to spare there i think above and beyond it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this up with just this 11 inch fan for now and if i'm not happy with the amount of airflow that i get from this fan I will possibly consider putting a, a pusher fan on the other side of the radiator as well as a double whammy. I'm hoping this fan will be enough though. You can instantly see I've got masses of clearance now behind the back of the fan and the nose of the pulley or the, uh, the water pump. So the engine can move a bit, I'm not going to have any interference issues whatsoever. We've got the fan there, basically what we're going to do is we're going to cable tie through these holes, through the radiator veins and back under so I'm going to pull the radiator and just lean it forwards a little tip for you if you've never done this before what you need to do to get the radiators out of these cars don't just pry up on this clip for God's sake you'll break it you want to get a screwdriver in there and work down and it will pop off like so okay so what we're doing here is just feeling through the veins of the radiator see where we can go with the uh, cable ties the radiator fan is now cable tied onto the back of the radiator, it's nice and solid in there. I'm not going to move that around. Um, we've been very careful to go through a couple of channels there so it's nice and secure. I've taken the cabling and I've run it just through the screw in the radiator here. And then I've run it underneath the connection which is nice and tight and cable tied it onto the little uh, tab here of metal. It's like a hole like this basically. And then we've got the signal wire here for the thermostatic switch that's going to go just in here and the earth wire that's going to come around here and connect down here so I think the next thing we'll do is we'll screw the thermostatic switch down into here and we'll plumb the the little bulb actually into the radiator hose pipe okay so we've got our uh, 
switch just here. Just feed the signal wire around the back of the switch. I'm going to do the same with the earth there, right down the back here. I've got the earth wire following this trunking here. Just going to try and neaten it up by a little bit of tape on them just to hold them steady. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the earth, which is down here. So I reckon we need to nip a little bit off this wire. And then we're going to make a, a wire loop here. So we've made a little wire loop, we're just going to solder the end here together. And then this is eventually going to come down here through this trunk. And we're going to go down following this earth here onto this nut. So let's grab ourselves a socket for that, I think that's a 12mm. So the last thing to do at this point is to take the top hose of the radiator off and get this bulb in here. I'll just take the uh, radiator cap away. What we're going to do here is we're going to just go gun ho and take this off and shove it straight down in there. And we don't want leaks, so we've got a special rubber insert. And as belt and braces sort of stuff, we're going to put a little bit of silicon around it as well. And let that cure whilst we do the rest of the, uh, the install. Okay. So in our little kit comes this little part here. It's a little semicircular rubber insert. This is designed so that the the wire can sit in this channel and then this is going to sit on the neck of the radiator so that it seals properly. We want this bulb down into this pipe quite comfortably so I would say we want a fair bit extra to go down in there and we'll whip it off now and we'll stick it together but before we do that we're going to get a little bit of silicon and we're going to smear a bit of this in this channel Okay, so we've installed our, our bulb, it's sitting in the top radio, radiator hose at the moment. Confidence is slightly lacking on whether or not we're going to get any leakage in that top hose. We're hoping not, but we'll see what happens when we get the engine started. All we've got left to do now is to wire it up to the actual fuse box. So, this is not blood on my hands, this is silicon sealant. So, we'll go back over here with our, our little relay. Right, so with a bit of swearing, we've managed to get our relay box down in this spare space here in the fuse box. Uh, we're going to connect power up first here. And then we'll go to ground next in here. Can run the signal wire in this channel again along the trunking and then to pole number one of the thermostatic switch we'll if anyone out there knows a trick to getting the back screw out of the fuse box will you leave it in the comments section down below because I've got a what's this a T9 screwdriver to remove these screws 
and there's absolutely no way I'm getting it to that screw down the back so I have no idea how to do it. I've taken off this plastic cover for the DME I still don't have enough clearance to get it out and just undoing this one at the back quarter here was nearly impossible so if anyone's got any special tricks for that let me know, I'd love to learn Okay so we've got all the switch connected up we've got all the wiring nice and neat we've got all the earth connections nice and tight and the power connection nice and tight we've got our relay in here we've got our wiring where it should be so now we've got to start the engine up run it up to temperature and hope that we get a fan kick in when we want it to Okay, so we've bled the coolant as best we can at the moment, E36s, we won't even go there uh, I think we're looking good, I don't think we've got any leaks from the upper radiator hose but that's really going to show itself when we've got the rad cap back on and we've got the pressure building up in the system so uh, I'm at my garage at the moment, I'm going to drive it home to our flat and hopefully it's not going to piss all the coolant out everywhere and we're going to have big problems but at the moment it looks like it's working fine it's coming on when it should, it's going off with the ignition all the wiring seems to be correct, so fingers crossed, we now have an electric fan. If you've got any questions or comments, any criticisms, whatever you feel like, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We're nearly at 100 subscribers, we might be there now for all I know. Uh, and I'm really amazed by that guys, so I love doing the videos. Keep watching, I suppose it's Paymo out.